I think prostitution should be legal. I do. I think prostitution should be legal, not because I'm pro-prostitute, but because I'm anti-arresting someone for being the saddest thing you could possibly be. <laughs> Like, I don't even know how they call that one in. They're like, home base, home base. Uh, yeah, we got a woman who thought her life could get worse. We'll see if we can fix that for her real quick. <laughs> come here, miss. Come here, miss. Yeah, we're going to add a jail sentence to that crack habit. You'll get a job then. <laughs> Enjoy it for as long as you want. It's fine. I'll tell one joke if you want. I think prostitution could end racism if we legalized it. I do. Did you know there'd be like three redneck dudes who would show up to the whorehouse 15 minutes before closing and there'd be just like one Asian girl left? And they'd be like, we'll try it. You want to try it? You want to try it? All right, we'll come back. We'll try it though. We'll try it. <laughs> and they'd go in and have a great time. And on the way back, they'd just be like, hey, um, not that I'm sympathizing or nothing, but did you notice how that yellow girl's vagina felt just like a white girl's vagina? <laughs> <laughs> you don't imagine her heart beats the same way too, do you? <laughs> If we would prick her, she would bleed also. <laughs> Should we treat all women as poorly as we treat white women? <laughs> Can we do that? <laughs> I had to take a drug test recently uh, to work at Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Which is weird, because doing drugs was the only way I was going to work at Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Those idiots paid 50 bucks for a test to prove I was going to take a sober look at my life and quit after three shifts. <laughs> Wish I did. It's like, no, nah, it's clean. Don't give him the good uniform. He's leaving. There's, there's no way it's going to happen. It's hard for me to pass a drug test, though. It is, because I only do one drug. I uh, smoke a little dope. I'll be honest with you guys. Don't judge me. I smoke a little dope. I don't know if you know this, but marijuana lasts in your system longer than any other drug. Because your body doesn't give a shit that it's in there. <laughs> You're just drinking all this water like, come on man, get the weed out, get the weed out. It's like, why? It's not hurting anything, leave it alone. <laughs> if we don't get this Mountain Dew out in 30 minutes, you're gonna die. I do a lot of drugs. Some people think because of the amount of money I make in the car I drive, I do a lot of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, I've only done mushrooms one time. I did it one time. And what I found out about mushrooms is, like, I thought I was going to lose my mushroom virginity the way girls think they're going to lose their sexual virginity. I was just like, it's going to be with someone really special. <laughs> and there's going to be that one song playing that's like, who can say with <laughs> And it's gonna be out in the open, like in nature, but not like not like out in the open, like in a field that's never been seen before. <laughs> but I found out I lost my sexual virginity the way girls actually lose their sexual virginity with my friend's cousin at a Fourth of July party. And my excuse was, ah, there'll be fireworks later. That's pretty. We'll bond over that. I've been trying to get in better shape recently. It's something I'm trying to do. I've been I've been running some. Been running. I've heard people say they get runners high. Pretty sure I get runners drunk, guys. Pretty sure that's how it works. Because after like the first quarter mile, half mile, I'm just really talkative and energetic. I don't care what music you play. I'm like, oh, is this journey? Hell yeah! Let's don't stop believing. Let's do it. <laughs> then after like a mile and a half, two miles, I'm blacking out, pissing on cop cars. <laughs> I'm calling up my ex girlfriend. It's like, hey, you think about me sometimes? <laughs> God, Josh, are you running again? <laughs> no, I just miss you. I miss you a lot. If you miss me so much, why do you only call me when your heart rate's above 90 beats a minute? Explain that. <laughs> I, know, I want to get better shape, but I think maybe I should just lower my standards. That'd probably be just as good, too. <laughs> like, I saw a fat couple the other day, and it changed my life, you guys. It did. Why are we all not fat couples? <laughs> Can you want to answer that? Why are we all not fat couples? Tell me, we all want to eat the food we want and fuck who we want, and if all we have to do is swallow our pride and plug our nose, then we can have both. <laughs> no, we can have both. It's still funny. Why did I care? But no, like fat couples, those are the only people that I believe are Zen Buddhists. They're the only ones. Like if you are one of two of a fat couple, I'll believe that. Those people are just like, hey, uh, hey, do you like to eat and uh, fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like to eat and fuck. I like to eat 
Do you want to do that forever and, and ever and ever? <laughs> but what about what society will think of us and the potential health risk involved? <laughs> you remember how all physical presence is an illusion? <laughs> Pizza Huts and blowjobs from here to the next life. Why aren't we doing that, you guys? I've had a problem in life recently. Uh, it's getting harder for me to pretend like my grandma's cooking's the best I've ever had before. And I was thought it was easy. It was like Happy Meals and Grandma's food. She won by default on that one. But now I'm older. I've seen the world. I've tasted things. It's not the same anymore. Every family event I go to, there's always one uncle that's like, you never had anything this good, happy boy. You never had nothing this good. <laughs> you, never had, you never had nothing this good. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I have. It was made by a chef. <laughs> Someone who loved cooking so much, he studied the art form. Not a woman who was made to do it because of the time period she was born. <laughs> I give my grandma shit though. It's hard to season stuff right when he wanted to be a veterinarian so damn bad. I could have helped all the horses. <laughs> as why does my grandma's cooking have to be the best? Explain that to me, please. Her vagina started our family. Isn't that the beautiful thing here? Isn't that the thing we should all be waiting in line to eat at Christmas? <laughs> Lying about how good it tastes. My oh, grandma, it's great. Age to perfection. Growing up, I had these really poor cousins growing up. You guys experienced this? It was terrible. These poor cousins, they were the kids of my drunk uncle. And they like just existed to make me feel bad. That's why like every time I wanted a new toy or something, my mom would call them over. She'd be like, Jeff, bring the kids over, Jeff. Yeah, Josh wants a Nintendo. Bring the kids over, Jeff. I know you're too drunk to drive. You're always too drunk to drive. Bring them over, Jeff. Bring them over. Yeah, I'll give you gas money, Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, driving gas and sniffing gas. Just bring them over, Jeff. Bring them over. And they just walk in and instantly start making me feel bad. They just walk in and be like, Oh, wow, you guys got carpet? No way. <laughs> yeah, we don't have carpet anymore. Dad got drunk and ripped it up about a month ago. He threw it out in the front yard. Now a bunch of snakes live in it. <laughs> when we get off the bus, we gotta run real quick or they'll get us. Sometimes late at night, I'll go out back and let one wrap around my neck just to feel the embrace of something living. <laughs> and I figure even if I die, how could hell be any worse? I knew he was going to hell, guys. It's his father's debt he had to pay. Raise your kids right. I love rap music. Does anyone here love rap music? I love it. But it's making me stupid, you guys. It's making me stupid. Like, like have you noticed how, like, how secondhand cigarette smoke is worse for you than cigarette smoke? Well, listening to a guy talk about doing drugs and fucking dumb girls is worse for you than doing drugs and fucking dumb girls. That's the thing, because you get the unfiltered stupidity. That's what you, you don't get to see his life. You don't get to see him at the dealership when he's buying the Range Rover, filling out the form. He's like, hey man, what's the area code again? What's that? Uh, it's that thing you have tattooed on your forearm. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I got only love dumb rap music. Guys, the only, the only rap music I love is dumb rap music. I don't want to hear about the welfare state. I don't want to hear about police brutality. Not when there are pussies being popped somewhere. Come on, guys. Get it together, rappers. I don't want to hear about all that. I've been taking a blast from my past recently. Uh, I've been watching the Andy Griffith Show on Netflix. Anyone else? I love the Andy Griffith Show. Not as much as some people. For some people, the Andy Griffith Show is the perfect America. It is. It's like everyone is just kind, know each other's names, problems are handled with civil behavior and understanding, and everyone's white. <laughs> That's how it is in Mayberry. I'm pretty sure in Mayberry, if you have a suntan, they have a separate bathroom for you there. <laughs> Griffith also existed in a time pre-child molester as a thing. Like, no one in Mayberry, they didn't know what a child molester was then. 
Like there's an episode where Obi runs away and he just meets this hobo. And you're like, oh, I'm so glad he met that hobo. Good, he'll be safe now. <laughs> it's a Mayberry hobo. <laughs> and the hobo just like takes him down to the river and goes and finds Andy and Andy's just ecstatic. Goes and picks up Obi and Obi's like, dad, dad, dad. He gave me a bath, dad. <laughs> And he's like, good, thanks for playing my play. I'm not nerdy like me. And B's always bitching about his shorts getting dirty. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, Dad, he touched me down there. He touched me down there. Well, yeah, Opie, that's how a bath works. <laughs> I always told you it's not clean fishing if your bait's dirty. Come on. <laughs> More simple time. I want to do a character for you guys real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, just real quick, I don't know, I'm, I'm an artist, uh, I do multiple things. Uh, <laughs> this character is an observational comic with obsessive compulsive disorder. This is how it goes, this is how it goes. Hey guys, you heard about this Redbox thing? You guys heard about this Redbox thing? Ugh, what a hassle. You gotta rent a movie, you wanna leave your house. You gotta slam the door 15 times or your mom's gonna die. Come on, Redbox! You walk halfway down the stairs, you heard a bird chirp, oh, you gotta walk back up. Get it together, Redbox! Who's got time for this stuff? There's, uh, a lot of people don't like gay people. A lot of people don't like gay people, which offends me. Because uh, they don't like them because of who they want to have sex with or they want to marry, which is bullshit. Because there's, there are perfectly logical reasons to not like gay people. There are. Like the fact they support terrible music. That's why I don't like them. I don't care who you want to marry, guys, but if Lady Gaga's career lasts half as long as shares, I'm joining Westboro Baptist. I'm going to be the new Fred Phelps. I saw an opening there when he died. Keep buying those tickets, fame monsters. Keep on. I dare you. I do. I have a, I have a way. I think the gay community could progress more. I, I, I think I have a way to I, I figured that out if you guys want to hear it. Um, look a little bit sadder about being oppressed. Just try it. Because sometimes I even forget that you don't have rights. I'll wake up and I'll be all pissed off. I'm like, man, we gotta help those gay people out. This is bullshit. And then I'll walk past a gay club that night and I'm like, Thursday night's bubble fight night, come on in. Come on in. And I'm like, oh, they're doing all right. We gotta take a page from like the civil rights movement. Black people had a meeting the night before the civil rights movement started. And they're like, no one's gonna smile for a decade. Nobody. I don't want to see any teeth unless you're biting a white cop. <laughs> Look sad. We're going to get this thing fixed. <laughs> I, was, I, was, uh, I was raised in the South. I was raised by a lot of cool people. Uh, a lot of really nice people that were also racist. You guys, like, I've known a lot of sweetheart racists in my life. <laughs> Just wonderful. I know people who would give you the shirt off their back if for no other reason than to hide the fact that your skin was a different color than yours. <laughs> That's like, like oh, come on, man, come on. Now that you're not fucking up my property rights, get it together. Get it together, let's do it. That's the thing, like, I didn't shun those people, you guys. I took their birthday money every time. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I didn't care their political views. Like, if I ran for president, I would be fucked. <laughs> Absolutely fucked. I did just be like, uh, Mr. Wagner, did you take multiple Best Buy gift certificates <laughs> from people who said Larry Bird was the best basketball player of all time because he played the game right? Did you? That's probably yes, I did. Thank you very much, Mr. Wagner. <laughs>